Module 10, Chapter 7.6, Solution of Linear Systems by Matrix Inverses. Earlier, we talked about operations on real numbers as compared to operations on matrices. We said real numbers and matrices could be added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. Real numbers and matrices also have some common properties. Both have an identity element of multiplication. That is, x times 1 is equal to x is equal to x times 1. We say that 1 is the identity element of multiplication for real numbers. Now, what do you think the 1 for matrices will look like? And both usually have inverse elements for multiplication. That is, a times 1 over a is equal to 1 which is equal to 1 over a times a. We say that a and 1 over a are inverses for real numbers. What do you think the ones for matrices will look like? Now, note I said usually 0 does not have an inverse because there's nothing we can multiply 0 by to get 1. So we'll see if there's a couple of matrices that may not have an inverse. If I2 represents the 2 by 2 identity matrix, then I2 looks like 1001. This is the 2 by 2 matrix that you can multiply any matrix by and it will not change the value of that matrix. For example, if we wanted to show that I, that A times I2 is equal to A and I2 times A is equal to A, where A is 3, 2 going across, negative 2, 1. So A times the 2 by 2 identity would be 3, 2 times negative 2, 1. Now the 2 by 2 identity is 1, 0, 0, 1, which, remember, this is a 2 by 2. This is a 2 by 2. They're the same size, so we can multiply, and our answer will also be 2 by 2. Now, remember to get this row 1, column 1, we multiply row 1 by column 1. So we get 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 times 0 is 0, so 3 plus 0 is 3. To get row 1, column 2, we multiply row 1 and column 2. 3 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2, 0 plus 2 is 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 0 is negative 2, and negative 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. Notice we get exactly what we started with, which is the way that identities are supposed to work. Now, you can go through and do it for I2A. You want to show that 1, 0, 0, 1 times 3, negative 2, 2, 1 is equal to the original A. For any value of N, there is an N by N identity matrix having 1's down the main diagonal and zeros elsewhere. Write the 3 by 3 identity matrix. So we get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Write the 4 by 4 identity matrix. Well, it's going to have 4 rows, 4 columns, 1's down the main diagonal, and zeros elsewhere. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. The catch is you always want 1's down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Now let's switch over to inverses. If A is an N by N matrix, then its multiplicative inverse, A to the negative 1, or A inverse, must satisfy A times A inverse equals I, which is the identity, and A inverse times A is equal to the identity. Only a square matrix can have a multiplicative inverse. 
Now, if a inverse exists, then it's unique, which means if there is an inverse, then there is only one. We can't have multiple identities. If a inverse does not exist, then we say that a is a singular matrix. To show that two n by n matrices are inverses of each other, it is sufficient to show that AB is equal to I sub n. You do not have to show that BA also is equal to I sub n. Now the steps for finding the inverse matrix. Form the augmented matrix A with the vertical line I sub n, where I sub n is the n by n identity matrix. Perform row transformations on the augmented matrix A slash I sub n to obtain a matrix of the form I sub n slash B. Number three, then matrix B is the A inverse. For example, if we wanted to find the A inverse of matrix A, we would start out by saying A slash I sub n which is negative 5, 3, negative 8, 5, slash. Now, because that's 2 by 2, we're going to do 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, do you remember how we did this row transformation earlier? We need a 1 right here. So that means we're going to go through and divide row 1 by negative 5. divided by negative 5, which would give us um, 1, negative 3 fifths, 1 negative fifth, and 0. Then we'll leave row 2 the way it is for right now. Now what we're going to do is we need a 0 right here. So that means we're going to have to add an 8 to that. The, the way we do that is we do 8 times row 1 plus row 2 will give us a new row 2. So row 1 stays the same. 1 fifth negative and 0. So we're going to do 8 times 1 is 8 plus negative 8 would give us 0. 8 times negative 3 fifths, which would be negative 24 fifths, plus 5, so that's negative 24 fifths, plus 25 fifths, which is 1 fifth. Then to keep going, we've got 8 times negative 1 fifth, plus 0, which is negative 8 fifths. And then we've got 8 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Okay, now that finished our column 1. Now we're working on this one right here, which says, hey, let's multiply everything through by 5, because we need that to be a 1. So we're going to say 5 times row 2. Well, row 1 is still 1, negative 3 fifths, negative 1 fifth, 0. So 0 times 5 is 0. 5 times 1 fifth is 1. 5 times negative 8 fifths is negative 8. And 5 times 1 is 5. Now, almost done. We've got our 1, 0. We've got our 1. We need a 0 right here. So the way we get that is we're going to multiply the bottom row, the bottom 1, by a 3 fifths and add it back up. So we've got 3 fifths times row 2 will give us the new row 1. So 3 fifths times 0 is 0 plus 1. That one stays 1. 3 fifths times 1 is 3 fifths plus negative 3 fifths is 0. 3 fifths times negative 8 would be negative 8 fifths minus 1. I'm sorry. 3 fifths times negative 8 would be negative 24 fifths. Minus of 1 fifth would be negative 25 fifths, which would be negative 5. And 3 fifths times 5 would be 3. 3 plus 0 is 3. And then we get 0, 1, negative 8, 5. 
what we've got now is we've got I sub n slash A inverse. So our A inverse function would be this A inverse is the 2 by 2, negative 5, negative 8, 3, and 5. Let's use our graphing calculator to find A inverse and see if it's a little bit easier. I'm going to back us up and let's do this one first. So second matrix, first thing we're going to do is edit. We're going to enter a 2 by 2 matrix of negative 5 going across 3, Second row, negative 8. Bottom row, 5. Then we do second quit. Now, we stored that in A, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull that one back up. Second matrix, A. And then we've got an inverse button right down here, the fourth one down. So that is A inverse. And when we do that, we get the negative 5, 3, negative 8. Five. So when we come over here to do a 3 by 3 matrix inverse, you know, we could set it up and do A times that I3, which is the 3 by 3 identity, work it out until we get I sub 3 here, and then we get A inverse. But you can just use your calculator. Second matrix. First thing we're doing is going to edit it, and it is a 3x3 three three matrix. 1, 3, 3. 1, 4, 3. 1, 3, 4. Second quit. Now we're going to pull it back up. Second matrix of matrix A, inverse, which is right above the squared button, is equal to A inverse. 7, negative 3, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. I think that's a little bit easier than doing the long pencil paper method. We can use the matrix inverse to solve a system of equations assuming the matrix inverse exists. Okay, to solve the, an equation of the form AX equals B, Multiply both sides of the equation by the A inverse. This gives us X equals A inverse B. Remember, when multiplying by matrices on each side of a matrix equation, be careful to multiply in the same order on each side. Multiplication of matrices is not commutative. So we want to do the A inverse first times B where B is actually the answer coefficient. Okay, so let's practice. Let's set it up first. If we were doing this, A is the co is the matrix coefficient, which would be 3, 6, 0, 6, 4, 1, 3, negative 2, negative 1. B is the answer matrix, which would be 12, negative 4, negative 3. So what we want to do is we want to find A inverse and multiply that by B. So if we did this on our calculator, okay, we're going to set up our matrix, second matrix. We're going to go to edit, 3 by 3, and then we're going to do 3, 6, 3, 6, 4, negative 2, 0, 1, and negative 1. Now we're going to second quit that, go back to matrix, choose that matrix A, and do our inverse. Okay, so there is our inverse. Now you notice that is point zero four one six six six, which looks pretty bad. What you can do is go back and it'll put it in fraction form for you. Go to math. Choose option number one fraction, and now we've got a matrix inverse that looks a little bit better. Now we need to go through and enter B. So let's go back to second matrix. This time let's go down to choose matrix B, and we're going to edit it. 
Now, matrix B is a three by one. It has three columns, three rows, and one column. So that would be 12, negative 4, and negative 3. So we're going to quit. So now we're going to go back and we'll clear that off. We've got second matrix A inverse times matrix B. Second matrix A, select that so we've got A inverse B, which says that our solution would be 0 0.25, 0 0.25, or 3.25. If we want to go to math 1, that's our fraction, which says x is 1 fourth, y is 1 fourth, and z is 13 fourth. So our ordered triple would be 1 fourth, 1 fourth, and 13 fourths. So we have talked about lots of different ways to solve systems of equations. We have the graphing method, elimination method, substitution method. We have the RREF method. We have Kramer's rule. And now we have the matrix inverse method. Now you are ready to complete this section of homework on my math lab.